still here. So yeah, we're a month into the ecosystem bowl build and I often get pretty much the same similar questions for these type of builds. The two most common, que that's one. The two most common questions I get asked are, first of all, how do you stop that oily substance on the top of the water? Number two, how do you clean the tank? And Well, actually there's three. And how do you vacuum the sand? So question one there was about the oily substance on the surface. Well, as you can see, there's no oily substance on the surface. Now that's pretty much because this tank has got balanced so, so fast. And I personally put that down to how well we set it up with the substrate system. You can see there, look, we've got some coarse gravel, we've got bags of Aquasaur, and then we're all capped with sand. So basically, there is no sort of free floating organic matter, apart from the waste from the shrimp and the snails in the water column. And I think that's why, you know, we've got such a clean surface with no scum. You can see some sort of mineral or deposit of some kind around the top of the glass there but it's very, very minimal. But as always, I think it's a really good idea to recap the building of the tank, and that'll also give us clues as to why it's been so successful. First of all, we added a gravel down as a base layer for the whole system. A good inch or so in thickness is plenty. Next up, I added Aquasaur to little media bags. You've seen me do this quite a few times now. Basically, this locks in the aqua soil. It just stops it being able to float around into the tank. Nothing worse than having to pick that out all the time. Also, the media bags allow for roots to easily penetrate them and get to the nutrients. These are then placed on top of the gravel, and then we just cap the whole thing with sand. This one's like a quartz-based sand, so basically pool filter sand. Next up, we lay in some hardscape. I've used elderly stone and a little bit of spider wood. With a small space, it's really important to keep the hardscape small as well. So that's what we've done here. Right in the center, not too imposing because we need a lot of plants in here. I then attach pieces of Java fern to little pebbles using cyanoacrylate superglue gel. This is then placed right in the center as the main focal point of the tank and then a little bit of Anubius Petite as well, just for variety and more detail. For the foreground, I attached moss and little trimmings of pearl weed onto pebbles. This is a really good way of creating like a fake carpet. You dot these around, they all merge together, you keep it trimmed short, it looks really good. and then it was just a case of filling up the tank with dechlorinated tap water and adding in our first livestock. I went with a load of neocaridina shrimp that I saved from a tank I was breaking down. Must have been a good 50 in here at least, loads of babies as well. Also, we added ramswan snails just because they're awesome in planted tanks and they actually help massively with the whole ecosystem. Not only does a tank like this add as a really cool sort of centerpiece for your home, it's also constantly evolving and that's what I really like about it. Plants are always growing, but also the inhabitants, the shrimp and the snails are always breeding. So the numbers are also changing and you're also getting variations of shrimp as well because we've got such a mixed bag in here. I'll get some random blues pop up, you know, some slight greens or, you know, something weird will just pop up and it's just interesting to come down and have a look and just see what surprises are in store for us. You can get a huge amount of fun out of something that is on the surface, not full of action. But if you come close, sit still and just watch, you can actually see so much going on. Now I set this one up a little bit differently to what I usually do because most of these plants aren't that fast growing. So it was kind of an experiment for me and I was wondering if it would actually work long term. Now fast forward a month later and I think it's safe to say the experiment has worked. Now when I say it's worked, what am I getting at there? What I mean is I've got more data, if you like, for moving forward with more ecosystem aquariums. I was always kind of under the impression that I needed to just use fast growing plants only. You know, anything else would just get covered in algae, especially when you haven't got a filter like this one and there's no sort of flow to move the nutrients around the tank. But that really, really isn't the case. I've got some sort of fast growing pearl weed down the bottom here, 
but the rest of them pretty slow growing. I mean, S repens, I'd say sort of medium speed, but nothing like a stem plant usually would grow. And I have to say that this excites me because it broadens the spectrum of the plants I can actually use. I was always sticking to like, I don't know, safe plants, like lots of fast growing stem plants, but now I know I can use slower plants as well as the stem plants, don't get me wrong. It like, it just means I can use basically anything. So I guess what I'm getting at is that the bagged Aquasaur way is safer, if you like. I mean, not that it's not safe, other way. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I think you do. <laughs> now this tank will only continue to be a success if we stay on top of it, so I need to sort some of this out. For instance, way too many floating plants. I've actually taken some out of the foreground here because the whole surface was covered. We need to trim this right back as well. The pearl weed and the, uh, and the moss that I put down the bottom, it's actually supposed to look like a carpet, not just explode in the foreground, taking up all the space. I want to be able to see the shrimp as well, you see, so I need to just get right in there. So the first job removing these floating plants is pretty simple. Um, if you, in case you're wondering, this right here oh, is mini water lettuce. So there's a bigger version of this, it gets absolutely huge, but this is the mini variety, and that's about as big as it gets before it sort of splits off and makes more, you can see. But it does have these massive roots. Now they'll actually grow right down into the substrate system as well, if I just you know was to let, leave them. But I don't want to do that because it just takes over the whole tank. So we need to take them out. I'm gonna take out most of them. And when I'm taking them out, there might be shrimp attached to those roots. So I'm gonna do dip, dip out dip again and then just put them in this pot now like i say i'm going to take out 80 percent of them because they just grow back so fast anyway oh there's my hygrophila pinna to feed i'll show you that in a second it's starting to grow out the top as well let's just get all this cleaned up a little bit so we can see a bit better oh there's that mineral deposit oh yeah look at that right in the center there at the back that is hygrophila pinna to feeder it's such a sort of real looking plant do you know what i mean by that I don't know, it looks like something that would actually be growing in a jungle somewhere. Now from the top, you can see, if I just come right in close, if it focuses, that is, there we go, look. So you can see this bit here is just starting to grow out the top of the water. And what actually happened is it would just shoot right up and be completely fine. It actually like sort of, I don't know, what's the word? Transforms into its immersed state, transforms probably an over, over exaggeration, but it, 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 it comes out emerged and growing out the top and it actually flowers as well. So that'd be so good to see. I mean, eventually there'll be loads growing out the top of this and I'm probably gonna have to trim it right back. But in terms of actually trimming the tank, we need to take down some of this in the front here, the foreground, this is the pearl weed. This is supposed to be short, isn't it? So that's the first job as well. Get in there and cut that. That's why I haven't scooped out any of this waste yet because I'm just about to generate loads more. So when you've got a small tank like this, there really is nothing to do but just jump right in. You can't even get the real angles you want as well. So you just gotta go at it like, I don't know, just, just get in there, get it down low. That tapping's really annoying, isn't it? <laughs> there we go. Already, that's looking so much better, isn't it? Now remember, in the foreground here, the point of this pearl weed is fast growth to maintain water conditions. I didn't want it actually blocking the view. I mean, it adds some nice greenness to the whole thing. Don't get me wrong. Missed that one there, didn't I? Yeah, there we go. We've opened it right up. Now, even these other little, you know, random little ones, cut them off as well, because otherwise you'll turn around, come back, and they'll be covering the whole surface. Just cut everything back. Right, so let's come down low, have a look. How's it sitting? That's so much better. Could have probably gone shallower still, but it looks good, doesn't it? Now, that s repens at the back maybe needs trimming back and the S repens in the foreground here. There we go, we can already see the shrimp moving around a little bit more if we just stay still. Um, the Java fern and Nubius, just completely leave that. It takes like 50 years to, to grow anywhere. <laughs> but yeah, those S repens, it'll just give us a better sort of line, I think. Okay, here we go, snippity snip. I'm gonna go quite low, because otherwise it's just gonna come straight back again. One there. And one up there. Yeah, on that side, just that much. That's all I wanna do. And then on this side, it was just a couple of pieces here. Look at that, perfect. Now, most of my tanks, I'd actually replant these S repens uh, trimmings, 
But with this one, nothing needs replanting. We don't need even more growth. We just need sort of better quality of what's already there. So by trimming these, more is actually gonna grow at the point we trimmed and it'll get more dense and look a lot better anyway. We don't need any more in there. <laughs> and I'll be honest with you, I've fallen into that trap before in the past where I've just kept like so much planting in a small area like this and eventually it gets so overgrown you can't even combat it and then it just goes to disaster rescape time. I wanna keep this one going for a lot longer. Um, I can I can foresee this being a good sort of year lot. Don't hold me to that. I've never kept I've only kept one tank for a year before, and that was because I was too lazy to do anything about it. <laughs> so yeah, all we need to do now is clear up all this mess, and then we're good. So that's all pretty much done. Now remember, I've not done a water change on this since I set it up. I did one water change on this one. I carried on water testing though to make sure everything was all right. And absolutely perfect. One water change since I set it up. Crazy. I mean, that's probably the most success I've ever had. I've always had to do a good few um, before it sort of settled. This was probably because this one's only got the snails and the shrimp in, remember. But of course, in that month, it has evaporated that much. Now, everyone always asks me that actually. How, how often do you have to refill things? Like how quickly does it evaporate? that much in a month. Now the reason is that is because the water is the same temperature as the room. So because of that you don't get a lot of evaporation. And then combine that with the fact there's no surface agitation as well. Perhaps it's too early at this stage to say that the bowl is a success. I mean one month isn't exactly a long time. But to me everything's pointing in the right direction. I've not seen a single shrimp loss in here. Now I'm not saying that hasn't happened. Sometimes the shrimp will just eat the body before you even see it. But given the success everywhere else in the bowl, I can't see a reason why that would have happened. All you gotta do is sit still for two minutes and there is so many shrimp and action going on everywhere. Now up until this point, I've not actually fed the shrimp at all. I've just relied on the biofilm being generated in the tank and also any leaves or anything like that you know, plants that are breaking down. But given the fact that the tank is doing so well, I'm pretty sure that soon the shrimp are gonna run out of things to graze on. None of the plants are dying at all and the substrate is completely clean. So we've definitely got to start feeding them. Now I'm not looking to get loads of breeding and that sort of thing, so it'll only be a little bit every so often. I've actually just set up a new breeding tank for Neocaridina shrimp and it is going so well, but I do a daily feeding with that one. It's much more of a functional tank. I called it the shrimp playground. I thought it was quite fun. And I'm already seeing loads of little tiny baby shrimplets everywhere. They're so, so small as well. But that's not what I'm trying to do with the bowl. I just want to sort of keep everything going, ticking along sort of as is, but with the odd surprise every now and again. So what I've got here is what's called a feeding tube. This is to make sure that the food lands in the place I actually want it to, rather than scattered around in places you can't see it. I'm gonna use some of my Cory food, just a couple of little pellets, put them down and see how the shrimp react. Hopefully they like these because I've got a lot of them. <laughs> Well, the shrimp seem to love the food, like practically every shrimp in the bowl is now in the front there. So that's really good to know. Hopefully success is going to carry on with this bowl. I just wanted to make this one to show you guys that think I set stuff up and then that's the, no, that's it. Don't bother with it again. The only time that does happen is if I'm just not into the tank, but like this is one of those that I absolutely love. Anyway, I hope you got some good tips and that's going to help you do your own bowl and I'll see you on the next one.